Register Phenomena Code 830 Object Class Gamma Red Hazard Types Grouped Hazard Extra-Dimensional Hazard Ideological Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-830, due to its current position within the Antarctic continent, is self-containing. As RPC-830 is technically an immobile structure, an excavation has been performed around RPC-830's position, though not strictly with the purpose of researching RPC-830. This excavation is currently ongoing, as multiple assumingly unrelated anomalies have been found surrounding RPC-830's underground position. It should be noted that, though RPC-830 was discovered somewhat recently, the entire area was discovered at the same time as RPC-830. For information regarding the other anomalies found at the archaeological site, please refer to the page on Antarctic Region 017. RPC-830 is an anomalous, assumingly concrete brick tower, buried approximately kilometers within Antarctic ice. RPC-830's architecture bears resemblance to a number of styles, though notably those of Greco-Roman and the works of Antoni Gaudi specifically Catalan Modernism. Notably, the uppermost portion of RPC-830 is designed in inconspicuous geometric shapes, architecturally inconsistent with the lower portions of the tower. After excavation, it was revealed that RPC-830 was built in the apex center of a partially anomalous tiered city. This area has been designated Antarctic Region 017, and will not be detailed exclusively within this document. As RPC-830 stretches approximately kilometers below the surface, many portions of the area are either in extensive caverns or buried entirely within ice. RPC-830 is one of the only discovered consistent elements of the area, connecting all recorded levels of the area. The excavation effort was halted upon discovery of the city, and instead now serves as a notable landmark for exploration teams. RPC-830 contains a host of anomalous properties, though only some of which are violent in nature. The most widespread of its anomalous properties is, simply, its lack of physically possible geometry. From the outside, RPC-830 is estimated to be 250 meters in diameter across its shaft, although some of its interior levels appear much larger in scale. There are two known entrances to RPC-830 one on the uppermost surface level of the structure, and one on the lowest point of the structure. Full exploration of RPC-830 is an ongoing endeavor, although currently no further expeditions have been attempted. Other entrances have been hinted at by exploration teams, however, no further evidence has been found to support their existence. The exterior of RPC-830 differs depending on the distance below the ice and in some cases additions have been made by seeming inhabitants of each level. Additions are usually distinct from RPC-830 in terms of architecture, alongside being non-anomalous in nature. Directly below the uppermost portion of RPC-830's exterior is several sections resembling the works of Antoni Gaudi, though darker in coloration. The lower half of RPC-830's exterior more closely resembles architecture of late antiquity, also dark in color. It should be noted, however, that the lowest and final portion of RPC-830's interior and exterior are those of gaudy style, even though the lowest levels of RPC-830 have only been seen and not explored. Strangely, RPC-830 predates almost all other structures found within Antarctic Region 017, and is one of the only sources of heat found within the area. Despite only producing enough heat to render its interior comfortable by human standards, multiple pine trees were found growing anomalously around the area of RPC-830's discovery. Approximately 21 degrees Celsius, though the temperature fluctuates below this. Since excavation began, these trees have since been removed or died, but the underground portion of the area not fully encased in ice also shows signs of affection from RPC-830's heating. Assumedly, RPC-830 was some kind of heat source, it has since begun to fail in some capacity, 
This is supported not only by the encasing of Antarctic Region 017 and ice, but by the living entities within an RPC-830. To see comprehensive logs of RPC-830 exploration, please view the following attachments. Addendum. Exploration was initially attempted by an ASF squad. However, upon entering the structure, all but one of the personnel was barred from entry by anomalously manifesting invisible barriers. The expedition was then conducted by one person, whose name has been stricken from the document at a familial request. RPC-830 Lower Exploration Board. All ASF personnel assigned to RPC-830 were equipped with microphones and cameras in their helmets. Though not strictly possible, audio recordings from within RPC-830 were still transmitted during exploration, allowing for these logs to be constructed. As RPC-830 technically has an upstairs portion, the floors are listed as negative, portions not exclusively described as being rooms assumedly had stairs nonetheless although no recording was made of how they were traversed. Floor 1 Entry Point The door closed behind me as I entered, though I was told to keep recording despite this. The room is, well, concrete, with a scratched-out emerald slab on the wall above the doorway. I'll try to keep these as clinical as possible, in case they're found. The stairs went both down and up, though upstairs had a blindingly bright glow coming from it. It was taunting me as if to say, you wouldn't dare. It was right, though. I was ordered to go down nonetheless. Floor Negative 1 Blank concrete cube, besides pedestal containing another emerald tablet. I'm going to remove the stairs portions, as they are all uniform. Floor Negative 2 Floor Negative 2 After descending the stairs, the level opens up anomalously to reveal the cold desert somewhat typical of the Antarctic landscape. Notably, one may still see the upper floors from the desert, alongside stairs that continue downward. The desert is lined with symmetrical rows of hexagonal salt-laden stones, interrupted by a mountain range several kilometers away. The stairs are unsupported, held up by anomalous means. Though abnormal, this level is otherwise mundane. Floor Negative 3 Normally proportioned level, with architecture atypical of the rest of the structure. The room resembles that of a Catholic church bell tower, notably with a bell in the center of the room. The staircase revolves around it, though the bell is notably cracked down the middle. Inscriptions are visible on both sides of the bell, written in Latin. Translated, it reads, That which I have said of the operation of the sun is accomplished and ended. Floor Negative 4 Notably, the stairs to this floor are much shorter than previously encountered. This level is proportioned the same to its exterior, with windows present. From the windows, one may view the numerous structures dotting the underground landscape of the city. The windows are structured from stained glass, and the room is outfitted with a woolen rug. The most comfortable room as far. I took a picture, with my headset camera. Floor negative 5 Architecture similar to late antique, with marble columns supporting the structure. A statue sits in the center, which seems to anomalously follow you with its head. The columns, despite being marble, are dark in coloration. The statue is made from the same marble, but the eyes are made from organic material. It resembled an ancient Roman senator, though his left arm was replaced with a limb similar to a crustacean's leg. It clutched another emerald tablet to its chest, the words illegible. Floor negative 6, same as floor negative 4. I found a man sitting on the rug, wearing a duster and waistcoat. The amount of notches on his pistol were enough to spell psychopath and braille. He offered me the gun and grimaced. His tongue was missing, and his face bore signs of some recent fight. I didn't want to know what caused it, so I left with the pistol. I figured he meant for me to fight something with it. Floor negative 7 Going down the stairs revealed another bigger on the inside room, this time a large open prairie. I believe this is where the gunslinger came from, as there was a dead octopus-like creature laying on the stairs. It was furry, though with tentacles. Grass grew on the stairs, an abnormality from the other open area room. 
Floor negative 8. Another gothic-styled room, without any kind of light source. It appeared much bigger than the exterior, with layouts similar to a kind of long hallway. An ornately decorated door sat at the end, with bullet holes in its granite surface. The walls were supported by a number of pillars, resembling those of Roman architecture. When I looked closer, I saw they were made of bones, sinew, and mechanical components. The machine parts were black in color, though gave off a faint bluish light, the only light in the room. Floor negative 9. This room was barren, simply a concrete cylinder with a table in the middle. The table, also a simple concrete cylinder, held a black orb structure atop it. The top of the cylindrical table was decorated in a mosaic of a sun, notably similar to those found on medieval shields and emblems. The orb was dripping, though the substance was absorbed by the mosaic. Floor negative 10. An infinite ladder, offset by an ashen fog. The ground with hexagonal stones again, the ladder looking to be made of wood. I didn't try the ladder. Floor negative 11. The level is almost normally proportioned, cubical in shape. Walls are decorated in generally blue-gray mosaics, depicting scenes of an unknown figure fighting a large crowd of seeming humans. The figure is mostly silhouette, though depicted with a crimson red cape. I heard whispering when I looked at the silhouette, so I didn't record the remaining mosaics, as to avoid possible mimetic properties. Floor negative 12. Tentacles. Similar to an artist's interpretation, rather than a normal cephalopod. The floor was made of tightly knit grass like plant matter, and the tentacles were all approximately a meter in length. They attempted to touch me as I walked past, doing nothing more than brushing against my coat. It scared me nonetheless. Floor negative 13. This floor opens up to the city, with six arches holding up the tower structure. It opens to an unfrozen courtyard made from an unknown rock material. Strangely, I heard music typical of a commercial ice cream truck from beyond the nearby glacial walls. Buildings were coated in frost, some encased almost entirely in the ice walls. The music began approaching, and I went further down without looking too much at the buildings. Floor negative 14. Another one of those gothic-styled rooms with windows. The windows are almost entirely encased in blue ice and the carpet was laden with dirt and snow. One of the windows held a stained glass picture of a woman, with fire coming from one of her hands. Her face was covered in actual soot, though the picture also looked like it had been made black there. Floor negative 15. The level is anomalously big, with hardwood paneling on the walls, floor and ceiling. Filled with black marble bookshelves, laden with more emerald tablets. All of them are written in some form of ancient Akkadian and touching one resulted in an ominous thud sound. I'm liking this less and less. Floor negative 16. As I walked down to this level, the room began to shift, like a snake changing its skin. I didn't have time to see what it had been, its walls expanding and morphing into more ornately decorated black marble. The room expanded more notably in one direction than the other, forming a hall. At the end, a spider had been sculpted from the black marble its eyes emanating a red glow. Most of the hall was lit from an unseen source, dimly enough that the red glow reflected off the marble floor. As I walked away from the stairs, the spider seemed to move. I didn't stay to see if it was real or not. Floor negative 17 Contrary to most previous levels, this one was anomalously small. Only big enough for the stairs and a small pedestal in the center. Everything in the room was made from shivering green emerald. A bronze chalice sat on the pedestal, filled almost to the brim with a pale blue substance. When I approached, an old woman's scream came from the chalice, shaking the liquid. Floor negative 18. This level is constructed from basalt. The walls seem to spin in a circle when I look. Floor… Floor negative 19. A ballroom, resembling Victorian-era architecture. Most of it was a gross green-yellow tinge, with people in theater masks dancing in the center of the room. The people had strings attached to their limbs, dangling from tracks placed on the ceiling. As they moved, their movement followed the tracks. A woman approached me, I think trying to get me to dance. I ran before she could. 
Floor negative 20. Anomalously small again. This room is built in strange resemblance to the enlarged inside of a tin can, with grooves and the like. Stairs get progressively smaller as they go down, to compensate. Floor negative 21. I think I'm getting close to another open part. This floor was another one of those window ones, but it changed just as I entered again. There looked like marble tendrils behind the walls as they formed, seeming to flee from me. The room's windows, after forming, were again blocked by blue ice. Floor negative 22. Upon entering this room, I could see a mountain range in the distance. Despite this, the surroundings show resemblance to the Sahara Desert. Entities moved in the distance, humanoid, but much taller than humans. Another group passed by me, dressed in a strange mixture of Arabic and Spanish conquistador clothing. One of the smaller ones, I'm assuming a child, took a look at me. The rest passed. Floor negative 23. The next room makes no sense. I won't even try to describe the physical proportions, as they changed at random intervals. The walls looked to be stained glass, though moving and deforming like liquid. I could see the sun at some point, though. I had to be too deep by now. The stairs threatened to move away with the walls, so I left quickly. Floor negative 24. I am starting to enjoy this in a malformed Stockholm way. I've never consciously thought about it. Tried not to think about anything that went on in this tower, but I've started to realize it nonetheless. This room was simply white, the only disruptions being the stairs up or down. I've started going back up now. The feelings will only get worse. Floor negative 23. Scratch that. Scratch it all out. The rooms change once you go back in them. Floor negative 23 is now another windowed room, with blood on the carpet. I hear growling from above. I want to get out, but I also don't. Floor negative 22. It's the spider room. The same black hallway. The same eight abhorrent eyes in the abyss. I believe the growling is coming from the spider, though it seems to be coming from everywhere in the hall. I acted irrationally. I shot the marble spider. The growling stopped. The only noise the reverb from the gunshot. I went back down, on instinct. Floor negative 23. The windowed room. Still unchanged since I saw it last. Floor negative 24. Still formless white. Thank God. Floor negative 25. The room is a concrete cube, with a brass door. When I opened it, it opened to a balcony, carved ornately from granite. Below me sat the city, of which I took a picture earlier. Walkways connected to the tower like roots to a tree. Buildings huddled around the streets, of many different makes and ages since past. I saw movement far below, though it seemed more mechanical than organic in a way. The city seemed miles below, as impossible as that would be. A name had been carved into the balcony's granite railing, alongside an arrow pointing to a specific building. The building's lights were on, though it looked like a cathedral. Glacial ice set far beyond, like city walls. Floor negative 26. This level resembles a hospital, from maybe the 1700s. Wooden structure, cloth curtains separating little cubicles with beds in them. People lay in these beds, though their faces were covered in darkly purple bandages. At the far end of the hall, a man in purple played a flute, wearing a traditional medieval piper's outfit. He stared into my eyes as he did so his pupils a bright red, though there was no malice in his face. I stayed a while, listening to him play. Floor negative 27. I think it's been at least a day since I started going down. I stayed on this floor for many hours, though I honestly never kept track. This one is that of a cavern, of normal stone rather than ice. The cavern is flat on the bottom, and it's filled with people. Human people. They go about their lives as if they were real, but I know they're not. There's market stalls lying in the cavern, selling things such as linen and spices. I traded a flashlight for a basket of fruit, though the shopkeeper spoke no English. I didn't know what they spoke, though everyone kept looking at a certain part of the cave. When I looked for what the focus was, there was only a badly drawn eye painted in red on the cave wall. It seemed to follow me as I walked. 
That seems to be the only constant of this place. Eyes. Offerings have been put at the base of the wall. Mostly things like crops and candles. I didn't know where they got food from. There wasn't an exit. I stayed to eat my fruit. Floor negative 28. I'm going to start capitalizing the tower. It seems like an entire world sits in here. Multiple worlds, even. It'd be disrespectful, honestly, to not capitalize the name. This floor is similar to the last, though only in that that it has people in it. It's laid out like a mosque, though strangely without any Muslim significance. The room is vast, with other offshoots as typical of an entire mosque building. The people were not truly human. Their heads were those of assorted different animals. They all wore turbans, despite their differences in head shape. None spoke English, but I thought the language was somewhat similar to Arabic. There were drawings, in some corners of worship, of the tower. Floor negative 29. An open prairie, with buildings in the distance. Big buildings. Skyscrapers, even. I started to make for them, but saw there was a canyon in the way. The canyon was bigger than even the Grand Canyon, and the bottom held nothing but black. The skyscrapers sat beyond the horizon, taunting me in their omnipresent reminder of normal civilization. I wonder if there's other people like me, and that gunslinger from upstairs. People who travel the tower, looking for either a way out or the world within. I wonder if there's a set of stairs emerging from a random spot in the desert, in our own world. Our own level of the tower. Or maybe this is our level. The whole thing. As if our world was somehow significant. I don't really know. And it never told me. I feel like it could, though. If it only had the means. Floor negative 29. This level is a courtroom. Completely identical to one in Washington, D.C. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew it to be true nonetheless. The stands were empty. Only the judge's chair held a person. As I approached, they began to turn darker, until their skin was completely shadowed in darkness. It appeared to be a woman, though she only had one eye. When the eye opened, I fled in fear. Floor negative 30. Eyes. Always the eyes. Nothing but eyes in this place. All the rooms have eyes, I see that now. The tower beckons now, like a mother to her lost boy. I don't know if I truly want to come home. Floor negative 31. Windowed area. I see blue light below. Floor negative 32. The tower's walls open the column doorways again, though there is no courtyard to greet me. A vast expanse of ice stretches out in all directions, the floor though flat looking incredibly thin, almost transparent. As I stepped outside, the ice seemed to release the tower from its embrace crumbling down to the level below. On instinct, I jumped away, and the ice collapsed further and further from the tower's marble halls. I looked back only to realize it had trapped me outside in the cold. I took a picture of the outside. I long for its intrinsic beauty now, like a lost lover I may never embrace. Perhaps we finally found something truly good in our search for demons. I sent this transcript an hour ago in the hopes it'll find its way through the ice somehow. If I'm going to die in here, I want to die looking at the beautiful tower. I can almost see its base, though there's more stairs to the bottom nonetheless. Always more. The stairs stretch down endlessly, the tower going onwards. It looks like a pyramid almost, with the tower blooming atop its marble precipice. The tower, which held entire societies in its walls, yet stretched up and down endlessly in its embrace of the multiverse. Our world may be significant, I think, in that we have the outside of the tower to greet us. We might even have been the top, had I the gall to go up. But we are just another one of the thousand levels to it, one of a thousand lost worlds of the tower.